Hey guys, and welcome back to Z3Cubing. This is my Rubik's Cube collection. Wait a minute, why are they all in boxes? So this is what it would look like if all of the cubes in my collection were still in their original packaging, because, well, they are. So I'm going to go through one by one and talk about each puzzle, while of course unboxing every single one. As always, there will be a link in the description to a document showing you where to buy each puzzle, and videos that I've made about every one. So let's go ahead and get started up here with all of my Rubik's brand puzzles. This is the Rubik's Void Puzzle. Basically, it's a Rubik's Cube that has a hole going right through the middle. According to the packaging, it's a whole new challenge. And this is also the Rubik's Void Puzzle. So what's going on here? We actually have two of them and they're linked together. So let's go ahead and do a quick unboxing here. There we go, and there we go. This is my Void Cube Chain Mod. Here is the world's smallest Rubik's Cube, which is actually nowhere near the smallest 3x3 that's ever been made. In fact, the world's smallest one is actually smaller than a single piece of this one. I even have a smaller one, but you'll have to wait until the end of the video to see that one. Next is the Rubik's Clock. Now this might actually be the most interesting package in this video because it's probably also the oldest, because this puzzle was only produced a little while after it was invented in 1988. So as you can see here, first the Rubik's Cube, then the Rubik's Magic, now, the real brain teaser, the Rubik's Clock. So let's go ahead and open it up here. Of course, I did get it secondhand off eBay, but it is still a really cool old puzzle. Like, look at those old instructions, just such old looking paper. And here's the puzzle. This is the Rubik's Mirror Cube. Now, I've always been a little bit unsure about whether or not this puzzle was actually produced by the Rubik's Company, but now I can confirm it is officially called the Rubik's Mirror Blocks. So as we can see here, it is just a shape-shifting 3x3. Now this is the last of the Rubik's products that I could find the original packaging for that I first got around 9 or 10 years ago when I first got into cubing. And this is some really cool packaging. There's a little mirror back there, so you can actually see the back of the puzzle. But I think it should come out just like that. And here's the Rubik's 5x5. Now this is a puzzle that I got much more recently. It's a 2x2 branded Rubik's Speed, which means that it's actually made by GAN and not Rubik's, just so that Rubik's can have some puzzles that aren't completely terrible. Likewise, the Rubik's Speed 3x3 is pretty much the same thing. You can see it says GAN technology inside which basically means that Rubik's couldn't make a speed cube so they got Gan to do it for them. Hey look it's another one. Wait a minute. The last one opened from the front. This one opens from the back. Okay that's weird. But yeah two cube companies sent me the same cube so now I have two of them. I put magnets in this one just for fun. This is a newer model of a normal Rubik's cube that's advertised as having faster action which is funny because even though it is a better design it pops less and stuff like that I find that it actually turns worse than the original. This is the Rubik's Connected 3x3. It's actually a very new product, which is a smart cube. So it connects to your phone over Bluetooth and allows you to track the different moves that you do on the cube. It has some very nice packaging. And overall, it's actually a very good cube. And like all good cubes branded under Rubik's name, it's not actually made by Rubik's, it's made by a different company. But yeah, pretty nice cube. Now this is the end of Rubik's products, but I thought it would fit in here well because this is also a smart cube called the Go Cube, made by a company called Particula, which was also the company that made the Rubik's Connected 3x3 that I just showed you. So opening it up here, it has some pretty cool packaging, that's a magnet in there. And this was actually a Kickstarter, which is why it says all this. Limited edition number 3292. And here is the puzzle. In the middle here are some more older puzzles that I thought fit well next to the Rubik's puzzles because they all also have large and difficult to open packages. First is the gear cube which is kind of like a 3x3 but with spinning gears and all the pieces and I've always thought this was a Mefferts puzzle but I don't actually see the Mefferts brand name anywhere on the packaging so they might have licensed the design from them or it might just be a knockoff but who knows. Here is my gear cube. This is the Mefferts gear shift. It's kind of a variation of the gear cube. It almost looks like a 2x2 version here. It is not in fact a knockoff. It says Mefferts right there and it kind of has that cool mirror packaging in the back there as you can see. Let's open it up here, and yeah, there we go, Mefferts right on the inside, and it can do this. This is another old Mefferts puzzle with similar packaging, it is the Mega Minx. I'm not sure why Mega is more capitalized than Minx, but yeah, it was one of the original Mega Minxes, and so yeah, it doesn't turn that great. This is a somewhat newer puzzle, but with the classic hexagonal packaging and the cool mirror background, as you can see there. It's made by Calvin's Puzzle, and it is a Mega Minx ball. So it actually came without stickers because it's a special limited edition transparent version, but yeah, I put the stickers on, and it's pretty cool looking. And finally, we have the Quadruple Fuse 2x2 Cubes, which is basically what it sounds. It's four 2x2s kind of fused together, end to end. And as you can see, also some very annoying packaging to get open. But here it is. Each of the 2x2s can turn just like normal. Next up, we have the V-Cubes, who kind of revolutionized bigger cube design. They made the first 6x6 and the first 7x7, but no one really cares about them today. This was one of the more recent V-Cubes I got, the V-Cube 8, around the time that I started my channel 6 or 7 years ago. And you gotta admit, even though people don't like V-Cubes a lot, they do have some pretty awesome packaging. 
the VQ products are protected by the following patents. Yeah, they wish. So inside of here was my first 8x8. It's pillowed, and at the time I got it, it was just an amazingly massive puzzle. This is the V Cube 7, the first 7x7 and one of V Cube's original puzzles, along with the 5 and 6. I got it around 9 or 10 years ago when I first got into cubing. It's also pillowed. I got it in white, that was an accident, and it looks like the plastic is actually kind of yellowing just because it's so old. It comes with this little instruction manual in here. Let's take a look. So we got the inventor of it. And here we go, we have a whole tutorial on how to put it together. That's awesome. This is the V-Cube 6B, which came out a lot later than the original V-Cube 6, around the same time as the V-Cube 8. And they made a lot of changes to it, including making it pillowed and putting in a brand new mechanism to make it turn a lot better, as you will see in a second. This is the original V-Cube 6 and the very first 6x6. And now that I think about it, this isn't actually the same packaging that they used when they first released this puzzle. I think around 2008, I got this one in 2011. And as you can see, this is why they had to make the V-Cube 6B. It turns terribly. Here is the V-Cube 5. I also accidentally bought a white one. And even though this wasn't the first 5x5, I know for sure the Rubik's one was out before it. It did turn a lot better than the Rubik's 5x5 at the time, even though today it doesn't turn that great. Here is the V-Cube 4. I guess their smaller cubes have slightly different shaped packaging. This one also came out a lot later than the original 5, 6, and 7. And as you can see, I put some special stickers on it, which are called Super Cube stickers. It basically makes it harder to solve because all the arrows have to be facing in the same direction. Here's the V-Cube 3, which as you can see, doesn't quite look like a normal cube. It has Minecraft textures all over it. V-Cube had, and probably even still have, a service called Create Your Cube, where you can upload pictures to the website and they'll print it onto a cube like this. And finally, the V-Cube 2 to finish off my V-Cube collection, 2x2 through 8x8. Actually, I think they did make a 9x9 somewhat recently. Do you guys want to see an unboxing of the V-Cube 9? Let me know. Next up, we have an entire shelf of Rubik's Cube mods. Well, except that one. That one's just big. So these are all cubes that I've taken and modified in some way, starting with the first row, which are all, well, you'll see. So first we have just a normal 2x2. This is the YJ Guanpo. Let's go ahead and have a look inside and... Oh look, it's a barrel. Next up, we have a totally unassuming 3x3 from Shangxiao. So let's go ahead and open it up and... What? It's a barrel? Next up, the Shangxiao 4x4 in a perfect cube shape, I would imagine. So let's go ahead and have a look and... Oh, it's shaped like a barrel. Next up is the Shangxia 5x5, and this one is new, so it's got to be perfectly cubic, right? Let's go ahead and take a look, and... Oh, a barrel? Next is the Shangxia 6x6. I don't even know what to expect out of the Magic Speed Edition, so let's have a look, and... Huh, it's a barrel. Shangxiao 7x7 Magic Cube. Skill level, 6 stars. You know, if it's got 6 stars, it's got to have 6 sides too. Let's have a look. Oh, no, it's, it's a barrel. I don't even know how to pretend this one's not going to be a barrel. This is the Land Land Super Floppy Cube. Let's go ahead and open it up. It has some pretty obnoxious packaging, but once we get it open, we can see that it is indeed a barrel. The Shangxiao Mega Minx. I wonder why it doesn't fit into its box right. Oh, look, because it's a barrel. Shangxiao, is it a 3x3? Is it a Pyraminx? Who knows? Let's check the label. Oh, it's a Speed Cubing Black Twisty. That makes so much more sense. But it's actually a barrel! Next is the Moyu Ready Cube, and it has the word cube in its name, so I think I know what to expect, and... What? They lied to us! The Shangxia 3x3, I mean Cube. I wonder why it could be bulging out of its box like this. Let's go ahead and see. Wait a minute. It's a barrel? And finally, the Shangxia 3x3, I mean Square 1. This one has the word square in its name. How much more square can you get? It's... It's a barrel. All right, all right, that barrel joke got old like 12 cubes ago. So let's go ahead and move on to our next row here, which is made up of mostly three by three mods. First up, we have a mod made out of a chi sail. And this one is a barrel cube. I bet you didn't see that one coming. Next up, we have a mod made out of a chi sail. Will it be a barrel cube? Will it have flat sides? Let's find out. It's an octagonal barrel. It's a barrel and it has flat sides. Next up, we have a mod made out of a chi sail. This is what's called a cutter cube. So basically you have to turn the middle layer 45 degrees like this before it's able to turn. Next up is a mod made out of a chi sail. This is a fissure cutter cube. So basically the same as the last puzzle, except everything is offset again by another 45 degrees. So you actually have to turn the top and bottom layers before being able to turn it. Next up is a mod made out of a chi sail. This is a pyramorphic. So it is a three by three turned into the shape of a pyramid or a tetrahedron. This is something different. Just kidding. It's a mod made out of a chi sail. So this is a bandage cube. So basically certain sets of pieces are fused together so that some turns are possible, but most turns are not possible, which makes it a lot harder. And it's made just like the Meffert's bandage cube, which I believe was the first one. Next up, we have a mod made out of a chi sail or two. So these are fused cube boxes or uh, fused cubes. And I'm not sure exactly how we're supposed to open these up. It looks like this one comes open like this. And this one comes open like, wait a minute, it's stuck. Uh, what do we do? 
Ah, it won't open. Okay, there we go. Fuse cubes. Next up, we have a mod made out of some YJ Guanlongs. These are Siamese cube boxes or uh, Siamese cubes, which is basically a different way to fuse cubes together. So we can take the boxes off like this, I believe. There we go. Siamese cubes. Next up, another mod made out of a YJ Guanlong. The reason it switched from TE sales is because these are now slightly older mods that I used a different type of budget cube for. This is a sticker mod, so it has a cool sticker pattern. I call it the pinwheel cube. Another YJ Guanlong, you know the drill. This one is another sticker mod, just like the last one. It kind of has this checker pattern to it. This is a Shangsha 5x5. It's not actually a mod, but it is tangentially related to modding because I made another mod out of a Shangsha 5x5 that you'll see in just a minute, and I actually broke one of the center pieces, so I had to kind of swap them out. It still does function, it just is kind of broken. This is also not a mod, it's a Mofeng Zhaoxi Meilong 4x4, and I've actually never opened it before. I bought it a little while back to make a mod with, I just haven't really got around to it yet. So, here it is. First time ever unboxing this thing. Same story with the Mofeng Zhaoxi Meilong 2x2. I bought it to do something with for an upcoming video, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. So here is the 2x2. Next up, we have a row of yet more miscellaneous mods. Next up is something really interesting because I modded it in 2014 or 2015, and I don't think I've ever even mentioned it on camera since. It's made out of a Shangsha 4x4, and basically it just failed so badly that I deleted all the footage about it and left it sitting in pieces. I just assembled it recently for the first time in over five years. So let's have a look. This is a 4x4 cutter cube that, as you can see, is totally unfinished. The pieces are all different shapes and sizes. It just kind of failed really badly, but it does function. You can turn the middle 45 degrees and it turns like this. I have no intentions of ever finishing it, but this is what it was left looking like. Here we have the Shangsha 5x5 mod I mentioned a minute ago. This is a 3x5x5. So as you can see, I basically glued the two layers together and then sanded everything down until it looks like this. And this is a really wacky looking puzzle and turns in some really cool ways. Similarly, this is a Shangsha 4x4 mod turned into a 2x4x4. So kind of the same process on this one. Glue the layers together, sand everything down, and now it is a cuboid. This next mod is made out of a Shangsha Wind 3x3. This is an even older budget cube that I used for mods even longer ago. And this is another bandage cube, but in a different kind of pattern that I made up myself. Here's another Shangsha Wind mod, and this was actually the very first 3x3 mod that I ever made. This is a cutter cube, same thing as the other newer cutter cube that I already showed you, except older, and it looks a little bit rougher. Stickers don't even match, but it works just fine. Another Shangsha Wind. This one is just a sticker mod, so it has arrows on it, making it a super cube, just like the 4x4 I showed you earlier. One last Shangsha Wind sticker mod. This is a calendar cube, so you can turn the sides to make it display any date that you want. And famously, I've just been really bad about keeping it up to date. So currently it says Wednesday, December 25th. I hope that was last year, but knowing me, it might've been like three years ago. The last few mods are all increasingly newer. The first one I made out of a Shangsha Pearl for April Fool's Day of 2018. And we're gonna have to open this package very, very carefully. Uh, it didn't quite fit, so I had to kind of jam it in here. And this is a cube that is designed to peel the stickers off. So basically all of these stickers are just held on by magnets and you can peel them off however you like. You know what's next up? It's a mod made out of a cheese sale. So this is what I made for April Fool's Day of 2019. We have to be very careful with it because if you touch any one of these pieces, it will pop right out. And so it's a cube designed to swap the pieces around. You can just take out a corner piece like this, take out this piece and put it in the right spot if you don't want to actually solve it. Next up is a mod made out of a cheese sale W. Okay, it's a newer version of the Chi sale, but this one's gonna be a little bit tricky to open because it does not fit inside the box. This one is my version two of the speed cube designed to peel the stickers off with custom 3D printed pieces so that the pieces fit exactly into their spots and don't kind of slide around like they did in the original. This was for April Fool's Day of 2020. This is a very heavy Chi Warrior W. So basically it's a stickerless budget cube from Chi that I put a bunch of dimes into all the pieces to make it really heavy. And the theory was that that would make it turn really fast. And I was able to get about a U7 by doing a single flick in the video when it was all lubed up. Right now it only does about a U3. This was my second attempt at making the fastest turning cube. I took a cube that everybody said was really fast, the Shangsha Mr. M 3x3. I made some modifications and sure enough, it is incredibly fast now. Next up is a mod made out of a chi sale. Okay, I promise that's the last one. Basically on this cube, I tried to do the exact opposite. I made the cube turn as bad as possible. It has terrible stickers on it. The magnets are reversed, so it never becomes fully cubic. And yeah, it sounds like this. On the inside, it's even worse. You can barely even turn it. Here we have a chi sale W. That's about it. 
I'm going to be using it to make a mod in one of my next few videos. Another Chi Warrior W, same idea with this one, it's reserved for future modding use. Next up we have an interesting category of mods called Force Cubes, which basically involves taking a bunch of stickerless cubes and rearranging all the pieces so that you just have one cube for each color. Now the first Force Cubes I ever made were with the YJ Yulong. Now not just any Yulong, but transparent Yulongs. So I'll go ahead and show you, this is the first one that I made with the white sides of six stickerless transparent Yulongs. And here it is. So it's totally transparent. It has some transparent stickers on it too. This one is the one I made with the yellow side. As you can see, it's all yellow. Next up, we have the green one. I lost a couple of center caps on this cube by making a giant tower of cubes and knocking them down. No idea where those went. This one is the blue one. Of course, it gets increasingly harder to see all the stickers as the cube gets darker. So yeah, pretty much really hard to solve that one. This one is the red one. This one looks pretty cool. And then finally, the orange one right here. That was a lot of unboxing. Here are the skew force cubes, or I guess force cubes. So same exact process on these ones. Just took six stickerless cubes and put them all together. Here is the white one. Here is the yellow one. Of course, there are no stickers on them just because, I mean, I don't know. I think they look cooler with just their colors without any stickers. There's the green one. Here is the blue one. Here is the orange one. And here is the red one. And my last set of Force Cubes, or I guess Force Pyraminxes, made out of the Diane Pyraminx because it was one of the first stickerless Pyraminxes. Here is the yellow one. Again, they are not stickered. Uh, moving on to the green one here. This is some intense high pressure unboxing here. Here we go is the blue one. And finally, the red one. Ooh, that was exhausting. All right, one last cube to finish off the shelf. Not a mod, but just something interesting. The world's largest Rubik's Cube, at least until they made a bigger one. This packaging is pretty entertaining with you to open the door of intelligence. Within a donated seven step recovery cheats, comprehensive technology upgrade, first class quality assurance. So let's see if we can get this out of the package here. There we go. It's a pretty cool cube. So next up, this entire shelf is pretty much full of puzzles made by Chi Yi. So we're going to start off over here with their X-Man lineup of speed cubes. The original X-Man Galaxy Megaminx was a pretty revolutionary Megaminx speed cube. It came in a lot of different variations, but this one is the sculpted version, which means it has these cool kind of like concave pieces to it. It has some pretty nice packaging here. And here's the Megaminx was a very nice speed cube for its time. The X-Man Galaxy Megaminx V2 was a pretty decent improvement to the original X-Man Galaxy, but instead of getting it in the sculpted version, I decided to get this concave version. I thought it would be really popular, but in the end, it actually wasn't that great. But then X-Man made yet another Galaxy V2 Megaminx, but this time it came with magnets. So I decided to go back to the original sculpted version, and with the addition of magnets, it became a really amazing Megaminx. The X-Man Shadow 6x6 was a pretty big step up in cubing hardware at the time, especially because it was magnetic, and yeah, it was a pretty good speed cube that I used for quite a while. The X-Man Volt Square 1 was also a pretty big step up in Square 1 hardware. Unfortunately, I don't have the box for it, so this is the Volt V2, which I don't think I ever made a video about, but it does have magnets in it. And it actually has magnets in both the slice layer like this, but also in these up and down layers. I think I was probably the first person to put magnets in my square one in this way. Here is the X-Man Bell Pyraminx V2. Again, I do have the original Bell Pyraminx. I just for some reason don't have the packaging for it. This is pretty much the best Pyraminx that you can get nowadays. It comes with this little screwdriver, I guess, as well as the Pyraminx itself. It has magnets that are adjustable and overall just really good performance. Here's the X-Man Wingy Skew. Again, one of the biggest advancement in Skew hardware. It has this kind of concave shape to allow for a better grip. And it is really in need of an update because this is really old and there are better skews now. Oh, I found the original X-Man Volt. I didn't realize I had this, but I guess these were a little bit out of order. This was the one that I magnetized myself before anybody else. And finally, we have the Chi Clock. Now this technically isn't branded under X-Man, but it kind of falls into the same category of being a really amazing speed cube made by Chi Yi. So it comes with a little stand here. And basically it's just a much better clock, much better than the original Rubik's one. Next up here, we have the Volk puzzles, also made by Chi Yi, but just under a different brand name. Also some really good speed cubes. Next up, we have the Volk 5M, and I sense an upcoming theme of boxes that open themselves very slowly. So it comes in this nice little box here. We have an accessories box that we don't have time to open. And here we go. Here is the cube, just an amazing 5x5. It's magnetic, it is my main. The Volk 4M, same deal as the Volk 5M, a very slow opening box with some extra springs, an accessories box, this nice little plastic case, and the cube itself, which is also my main and also amazing. Here's another Volk 4M. I think one of them has stronger magnets and one of them has weaker magnets, but I can hardly tell the difference. 
Here it is. The Valk 3 Elite M. One of the many improvements upon the original Valk 3, which was the first one of the lineup, it has a ton of accessory boxes because you can actually swap out the center caps to change the strength of the magnets. For some reason, this box does not want to open, but it is one of G's best 3x3 speed cubes. The Valk 2M. Same story as most of the Valks, a great magnetic speed cube and currently my main. Ooh, springs. So we have cube in a box. And finally, the Angstrom Volk 2M is pretty much the exact same thing, but with some special setup and lube from the cubicle. So there's their logo right there. But I've actually used and taken apart and messed around with the pieces with these cubes so much that I can hardly tell the difference between them because the lube has kind of worn out. In the next row, we have some newer miscellaneous non-WCA puzzles from Chi Yi. So basically all puzzles that you wouldn't find at a competition. First is the Chi Yi 1x2x3 Speed Cube. It's pretty much exactly what you'd expect. Just a basic cuboid puzzle that turns just like this. Next is the Chi Yi Fluffy 3x3 Speed Cube. So this is kind of like a 3x3 shape mod, except instead of the actual shape of the puzzle being different, it's just the shape of the pieces. So it functions exactly like a 3x3. Here is the Chi Yi Six Spot Cube Speed Cube. So basically this is kind of a mod of like a skewb. It's actually the same as another puzzle that Chi Yi has made called the Ivy Cube, just in a slightly different shape. This is the Chi Yi Gear Cube Speed Cube. So similar to the Meffert style gear cube that I talked about earlier, except the pieces are shaped a little bit differently, but pretty much the same gear puzzle. This is the Chi Gear Barrel Speed Cube, so pretty much the same thing as the Gear Cube except in a barrel shape. Next is the Chi Gear Ball Speed Cube, again same thing as the previous two except now in the shape of a ball. The Chi Gear Pyraminx Speed Cube, so kind of the same idea as all those gear puzzles except now in the shape of a pyramid. This one I don't really understand, it turns kind of badly and I don't even know how to solve it. The Chi Yi Clover Pyraminx Speed Cube, another interesting pyramid shaped puzzle, which is actually based on the Clover Cube, which I'll get to in a minute. It turns kind of like this. The Chi Yi Duo Mo Cube Speed Cube, yet another interesting pyramid shaped puzzle, which turns in some way like this. That's kind of interesting. The Chi Yi Coin Pyraminx Speed Cube, also another interesting pyramid shaped puzzle, which is based off the ancient coin cube, which I'll also get to in a minute. It turns something like this. And this is the Chi Yi Pyromorphix Speed Cube. Wait a minute, I've been wrong this whole time. It's more than a professional speed cube. Okay, so this is like a 2x2 version of the Master Morphix, a puzzle I showed you that I modded earlier, which was a 3x3 made into a pyramid shape. So this is a 2x2 made into a pyramid shape. This is the Chi Yi Pentacle Cube. It has some very nice looking packaging that at one point, a spider inside of my closet decided to live inside of, so I had to remove him. In fact, you'd be amazed at how many dead spiders you can find when you go through 200 some empty boxes in your closet. Anyway, yeah, this cube turns kind of like this. You can move around the centers like this. And once they're all lined up, you can turn aside and you can scramble it kind of like a three x three. A very interesting sort of puzzle. This is the Chi Yi Clover Cube. It has the same spider friendly packaging as the last one. And I mentioned this cube earlier in relation to the Chi Yi Clover Pyraminx because it looks pretty similar and turns just about the same, except it's now in the shape of a cube. It's also very similar to a puzzle called the Curvy Copter. And finally, the Chi Yi Ancient Coin Cube, Speed Cube, Spider Attractor, something like that. I also mentioned this one earlier in relation to the Coin Pyraminx. You can turn the sides like this and now the corners can turn. Now we're gonna move on to this other little set of Chi Yi puzzles that are either older or just don't fit into any other category. Now, despite the large size of its box, this is a standard size 3x3 speed cube, the Chi Thunderclap. It was a pretty popular 3x3 speed cube back in the day. I used it as my main for quite a while. It was really cheap and just overall a good speed cube. The Chi Yi Pyraminx. No, not the X-Man Bell, but the original Pyraminx from Chi Yi. I believe this was the first ever stickerless Pyraminx. I bought it. I was just amazed that a Pyraminx could be stickerless and it turned all right. Despite my comment about the Thunderclap being a normal size despite its large box, this puzzle has a large box and it also is a large size. This is the Chi Yi Big Sale, which is a big Chi Yi Sale. This is the Chi Yi Wuji, a pretty decent 7x7 speed cube back when it came out and it was my first 7x7 other than the V cube, so obviously a huge improvement. And yeah, I speed cubed on this for quite a long time. The Chi Yi Wu Hua, same story as the last one, except this one is a 6x6. I somehow made it kind of bad, it's really slow, but it was a good 6x6 for its time. The Chi Yi Wu Chui, I think that's how you say it. Kind of a similar story with this one, a really good speed cube at some time in the past. I never actually used it as my main, I was using the Mini Aosu at that point, and I just didn't really want to set this one up. The Chi Yi Wu Chui Mini M, this is a somewhat more recent puzzle, I got it at the same time as the X-Man Shadow 6x6M. Basically when magnets started becoming a thing, they even put a magnet inside of the box here, they started updating some of their older puzzles like the Wu Chui Mini with magnets, and it was a really good speed cube that I used for a while. Here is the Chi Yi Square One, it was the first really good square one speed cube way before the volt and I believe it was also the first stickerless one which was really interesting at the time. It transitioned to a spherical mechanism on the inside which basically allows for corner cutting whereas the old ones used a 
cylindrical design. The original Chi cube came out around the same time as the original Chi Pyraminx and Square One. And again, it was the first stickerless cube, which is part of why I bought it. I just thought it was really interesting. The Chi Twisty Cube. This is just a fun shape mod of a cube. As you can see here, it's kind of in this weird twisted shape. So one side at the top goes to a different side at the bottom and it functions just like a cube. The Chi Ivy Cube is another fun non-WCA puzzle I alluded to earlier. It's kind of like a shape mod of a cube. It turns in the same way, but it doesn't have half the corners. The Chi 2x2x3, two by two by just as you'd expect, is just a fun little cuboid. As you can see here, turns just like this. And finally, we have perhaps Chi's greatest puzzle, the 1x3x3 one by three by three spinner. It's cool. So let's go ahead and open this up here and see what is inside. We have this little puzzle, which functions just like a 1x3x3, by three by three, but it can also do this. And finally, to finish off all of Chi, we have these five budget puzzles right here, which are called the Chi MS lineup. The Chi MS 5x5 is a cheap and pretty good magnetic 5x5. The Chi MS 4x4 is a cheap and pretty good magnetic 4x4. The Chi MS 3x3 is a cheap and pretty good magnetic 3x3. The Chi MS 2x2 is a cheap and pretty good magnetic 2x2. The Chi MS Pyraminx is a cheap and pretty terrible magnetic Pyraminx. I'm kidding, it's pretty good. The last little corner of the shelf here holds all of my GAN puzzles, a company which needs no introduction. My first GAN cube was the GAN 56 Air SM. I think this came out around the time that Magnus started really becoming a thing in mass produced cubes, has a really confusing box, and yeah, it was just a really amazing 3x3 speed cube at the time, and it still holds up pretty well. The GAN 356 XS was around two or three GAN releases later, and was just overall an even more amazing speed cube. It also comes in this annoying plastic box that I never know how to open. It came with some newer features like being really light and adjustable magnet strength. This is the GAN X, which actually came before the XS, but I actually got this cube later because it's a custom cubicle puzzle under their Max lineup of puzzles, which is branded, of course, after Max Park. And it just has some custom loop setup from the cubicle and it turns really well. Likewise, the Max GAN XS is their custom setup and loop version of the GAN XS, which was the newer puzzle at the time. And again, this puzzle is just amazing and I used it as my main for a while. The GAN 356 RM was GAN's second to last release and at $47, this could actually be considered somewhat of a budget GAN cube compared to all the other ones I've shown you, which are over $60. So if we can figure out how to get it open here, this is just a small improvement of the GAN XS basically, but at a better price. Now GAN's most recent 3x3 release from just a couple weeks ago is right here, the GAN 11M Pro. And no, they did not downgrade their packaging. I got an early copy from the cubicle, so it came in this nondescript cardboard box here. But this cube is just, it's just incredible. Like all gang cubes, it's really good for its time, but right now, this is probably the best 3x3. And finally, the biggest package of them all, the GAN 356i. Now this is a smart cube, much like the Rubik's Connected 3x3 and the Go Cube I talked about earlier. So inside of here, we have the little instruction manual, we have the cube itself that connects to your phone with Bluetooth, and we have this little charging dock thing here. Next up, we have another almost entire shelf full of puzzles made by the same brand, which is known under the names Moyu or YJ or Guoguan or Mofeng Xiaoxi or MGC or a few others. First up is the original Moyu Weilong WRM, which came out a little while after the time that Magnus were first becoming a thing in 3x3 speed cubes, but somehow still after the current world record of 3.47 seconds was set. And so as we can see here, we got a ton of accessories and the cube itself. This was a continuation of the Weilong GTS lineup. And basically this was a version of the GTS 3M, but without the ridges that were on that cube. Next is the Weilong WRM 2020, which was basically an updated version of that last cube, except for the year 2020. And just like the original, it was good enough to become my main for just a little while until another GAN cube outpaced it. The Aosu WRM is of course one of Moyu's recent 4x4 releases. It has the same nice packaging as all the other ones. And one thing I haven't really mentioned is they all come with these nice little accessories boxes, but we don't really have time to go through them. I'm sure there's all sorts of cool things in there. But yeah, a pretty decent 4x4, but I think I like the Volk a little bit better. The Moyu RS3M 2020 is a very interesting 3x3 because if you didn't know better, you might think it's one of the best high-end magnetic speed cubes on the market. And in a sense, it actually is. But the other thing about it is it's also a budget cube. This is only $9, which is just an insane value. The Moyu Aoyan Cube is probably the best cube on the market at this point, which is kind of disappointing because it's kind of an old puzzle at this point. It has a nice little magnetic click to its box here. And here is the puzzle itself. But yeah, over the past, say, four years, this is the only skew that has actually come out and been better than all the ones that came before it. It has these cool little concave pieces on it. 
But yeah, it's a pretty good SKU, but it definitely needs an update. The Outchuang GTS was a top of the line 5 5 release from MoYu at one point. This is the Angstrom version of it from the cubicle. So of course they set it up and lubed it all nicely. Uh, it's kind of outdated at this point. The Aosu GTS 2 is the same story. It was MoYu's predecessor to the Aosu WRM, and this was the cubicle's Angstrom version of it. Moving on to some Guoguan products, which confusingly still have the MoYu brand name all over them. This is the Guoguan Yu Xiao Pro, and it has a nice little screwdriver in the box there, which was an improvement upon the original original Guoguang Yuxiao, which was a decent speed cube for its time. No magnets though. The Guoguan Yuxiao EDM, however, was the next cube in the lineup and it did have magnets. So this is the guy who designed it maybe. And here is the puzzle itself. It had actually not only magnets, but adjustable magnets. I think it was the first cube to have those. And finally, this is the Guoguan Jinghen TSM, which is actually a two x two that was released pretty recently. And the interesting thing about this cube is it has this little tool here that you can basically use to pull off one of these corner pieces. And you can do a little bit of adjustment on the inside and change the size of the cube. So it basically makes it so it's further out from the center of the cube so you now have a bigger 2x2. Two two. These are a handful of relatively new puzzles from YJ, grouped together of course because their boxes are the same style. Here is the YJ Guanpo Plus, a decent budget 2x2 two two that I have in white for some reason. Here is the YJ Guanlong Plus, same exact thing except it's a 3x3 three three and also white. Here's a fun one. This is the YJ Star Barrel, or as they describe it themselves, Colorful stars! So let's go ahead and open this up and see what it is. It's just a fun little non-WCA puzzle that turns something like this. It kind of looks like a Mega Minx at the end, and I guess they're colorful stars. And finally, we have the YJ Yeet Ball. So this is a puzzle that is functionally identical to the Chi Ivy Cube or the Chi Six Spot Cube like this, but it is in a size that is designed to be yeetable. Moving on to a handful of puzzles under the Mofeng Zhaoxi name. First up is the Mofeng Zhaoxi MF9 9x9, which is actually a surprisingly decently turning 9x9 for its price of around $35. Actually an amazing deal. Next up is the MF8 8x8, not to be confused with the other Chinese brand name MF8, which is coming up later. So same story with this one, just a really good priced 8x8. The Mofeng Zhaoxi MF3 RS2 was a really good budget cube at one point. This is just a stock version here, but the cubicle also made a really nice magnetized and lubed and set up version that was pretty cheap and a really good cube that was actually my main for a while. You'll see that in a second. This is the Mofeng Zhaoxi or MFJS MF3RS2M, which is probably the most random numbers and letters I've ever said in a row. So yeah, this is the cubicles version of that last cube that is magnetized. It just feels really nice, nice and lubed. It was my main. Now for a set of just random puzzles released under YJ. The YJ Yuhu Megaminx is, first of all, a pretty awesome name. Also, I'm not sure how a Megaminx is sharp enough to be able to puncture a sheet of plastic, but apparently it happened. And this cube was actually my main for a while. For some reason, they released it under the YJ name instead of MoYu, but it still was a pretty great speed cube. It's a little bit awkward, a little bit kind of flexy, but it still is pretty good for the time. This is an updated version of that Mega Minx with an even funner name, the YJ Yuhu V2. It is magnetic and it is also currently my main. It's just overall a really good Mega Minx with this really interesting grip pattern. All right, the fun names just don't stop with YJ. This is the YJ Yufu V2. This is actually a 7x7 and I actually unboxed it for the first time in my collection video like this last year. And so I think I did a couple of turns on it and never really touched it since, but it does turn pretty well. It has magnets. The YJ Yulong V2M. I guess the magnetic second version of the same cube, the YJ Yulong, that I used the transparent version of to make those force cubes way back years and years ago. This is actually a cubicle pro shot version, so they lubed it and set it up and turns pretty well. Next is the YJ Axis Cube, or as Amazon likes to call it, the YJ Fluctuation Angle Puzzle Cube New. So this is an older puzzle and a bit of something different. It's actually a 3x3 shape mod. So you take a 3x3 and change the shape of it so that everything is at kind of a weird angle like this. This is the YJ Glow in the Dark 2x2, and I can only assume that this means accident addition because this thing is pretty much useless. Not only is the glow in the darkness of it just kind of pointless, but it also turns really bad. This is just a very strange 3x3 under a very obscure brand name. It's called the San Juan Mars S. Apparently it is still under YJ though, so I included it here. And it comes with these two little plastic things that I guess are supposed to help you break in the cube. So you hold it like this and it kind of offsets all the layers so that you get a little bit more friction as you turn it, which I guess helps you break it in. But yeah, it just turns kind of weird. It's actually not that bad, but just strange. And one last obscure cube with a long name that's still technically under YJ is the Mohuan Shaosu Chuwen 2x2. And believe it or not, this is actually a pretty decent 2x2 that I used as my main for a little while. I put magnets in it, and overall, it's pretty decent. Now for a little set of random other MoYu puzzles. First up here is the MoYu 4x4 Megamorphix, or as they like to call it, the Rice Dumpling Magic Cube. So I talked earlier about the 2x2 Pyromorphix and the 3x3 Mastermorphix. This is just a 4x4 version of that. 
So it is a normal 4x4 cube turned into a tetrahedron. The Moyu Ready Cube, you guys saw earlier with the barrel version. This is just the original version, which is a cube, of course. It turns on the corners like this. This is the Moyu Weisu 4x4. It's definitely one of my oldest Moyu puzzles, and it's the 4x4 speed cube that came before the Aosu, which came before the Aosu GTS, which came before the Aosu GTS2, which came before the Aosu WRM. So yeah, it's a very old 4x4. After that came the Moyu Aosu, and this is actually a mini version of it. I used this as my main for a very long time, and it's still an okay cube. The Moyu Weilong. I think it's the Weilong V2 actually, and this very well might be my oldest Moyu puzzle. Definitely my first Moyu 3x3. You might say that it's from way long ago. But yeah, back when my best speed cube was a Zanchi, the performance of this thing just blew my mind. It was amazing and I had to buy it. So yeah, by modern standards, not that great. The Moyu Crazy Yilang. I think people call it the Crazy Fisher Cube because it's kind of like a Fisher Cube where you just offset a 3x3 by 45 degrees, but everything's a little bit more offset than that. So it gets some crazy shape shifting like this. The Moyu Magnetic Pyraminx. Now back in the day before magnets were really a thing in 3x3s, they had the idea to switch to using magnets instead of ball bearings to get a Pyraminx to snap into place. And it was actually a really good idea because this pyraminx was one of the best ones around for many many years it still is similar story with the moyu cube this is actually the original one before they had the idea to put magnets in it so it snaps together with ball bearings and then this was the way better moyu magnetic cube this is actually the precursor to the aoyan which is the current best cube and yeah it was pretty good with those magnets the moyu lingpo 2x2 one of the best 2x2s on the market around the time of the weisu or the aosu and like the weilong with the possible exception of the dian 2x2 and then finally, the Moyu Weipo 2x2, as you might guess, is just an improvement upon the Lingpo and still turns pretty well. Now to finish up Moyu slash YJ, we have the MGC puzzles, a nice little lineup of budget cubes. First is the MGC 6x6, which despite its low price is actually like really, really good. It has some nice fancy packaging here. And this puzzle is actually my current main 6x6, just because it is so amazing. It's magnetic and it's just like so flexible, but also so stable for a 6x6. The MGC 5x5 is just as cheap and almost just as good. I think I like the Volk 5 a little bit better, although this one might have better packaging, but for like half the price, you really can't complain. The MGC 4x4 is, again, a good magnetic speed cube at a good price, but there's just so many other options in the 4x4 market that it just doesn't make quite as much sense, but still is a really good cube. And finally, the MGC 2 2x2 Elite. It has some pretty interesting looking packaging here, but let's get it opened up. As you would imagine, it's a pretty decent magnetic 2x2 at a pretty decent price. And to finish off the second to last shelf, we have all of my Shangxiao puzzles. So we're moving on to a totally different brand. First up is a puzzle you've seen before, the 3x3 Master Morphix. I showed you my custom modded version of it earlier. This is just a mass produced version of it. So it is a 3x3 turned into a pyramid shape. And here we go, it's all nice and pillowed. Another 4x4 Morphix, the Mega Morphix. I just had to get the stickerless Shangxiao version to match the rest of the set. The Shangxiao 5x5 Morphix, or the Giga Morphix, you might be noticing a trend here. I'm just going through all of the Shangxiao Morphix puzzles. This one looks pretty epic. The Shangxiao 6x6 Morphix. And while we're admiring the package here, have a look at this badly cropped, low resolution, compressed JPEG image of the puzzle they stuck on the front. That's just, that's just beautiful. So let's open this up here. And this is just an incredibly massive puzzle. And finally, the Shangxiao 7x7 Morphix. Now I think this packaging more than makes up for the last one because this is really cool. I don't think you can tell on camera, but these lines across the puzzle are actually textured onto the cardboard. So you can feel the image. It's actually really cool. Same thing on these ones. You can feel all of those lines is just pretty amazing. I just noticed that. But yeah, the 7x7 Morphix is also a really amazing, just gigantic puzzle. The Shangxiao Pyraminx, back in the days before the Moyu one came out, was actually one of the better Pyraminxes for speed cubing. You did have to mod it though, so as you can see, I sanded down those pieces to make it have slightly better corner cutting. And yeah, it had bubble bearings, but it worked pretty well for its time. The Shangxiao 4x4 or Master Pyraminx. This is actually a pretty cool one, basically an extra layer added to a Pyraminx, and it's actually a lot of fun to solve, and turns pretty well too. The Shangxiao Magic Tower, or I think Jing Pyraminx as it's more commonly called. As you can see, this package is a little bit rough. It actually came to me like this. It probably got damaged on the boat over from China. And this is actually one of Shangxiao's newer cubes. It actually does have that cool texture I was talking about on the 7x7 Morphix. But yeah, the puzzle is unharmed and it turns something like this. The Shangxiao Killaminx. Basically, if a Megaminx is a 3x3, then this is what a 2x2 version would look like. So as you can see here, it's just a Megaminx minus all the edges and centers. And moving in the opposite direction, this is a 5x5 version of the Megaminx, more commonly called the Gigaminx. And as you can see from the size of this box, this is an absolutely massive puzzle. So many layers, basically, yeah, a 5x5 Megaminx. This is the Shangxiao Aurora. As you can see, it's third generation track cube, super fault tolerant, run as Aurora. 
So actually, I think this is technically my brother's cube, but somehow I ended up with it in my room and I have the packaging for it. So it's in this video. Now that one was a much older Shangshao 3x3. This one is a somewhat newer Shangshao 3x3, the Shangshao Pearl. And yeah, this one is just a little bit of an upgrade. It turns quite a bit better. All right, finally onto the last shelf. We're gonna start with some groups of puzzles from similar brands, and then we're just gonna get more random as we get down here. So starting off, we have all of my Yushin puzzles. Now Yushin, even though I feel like it's a pretty big name in speed cubing, hasn't made a whole lot of puzzles over the years. So I only have three of them down here. First off is the Haze 7M, which is actually a really good 7x7. I think it's my main at the moment. And yeah, it's named after Kevin Hayes, a famous big cube solver. Next, we got the Yushin Little Magic Square 1. We also got Kevin Hayes on there, even though I don't think he does Square 1 at all. And I think this was the first Square 1 to be fully magnetized, so both on the slice layer as well as on the top and bottom layers. This is the Yushin Kylin V2M, actually a nice little budget magnetic 3x3 release that has these built-in tiles instead of stickers. I actually lost one of the center caps while skiing with it, and so I made it up with another center cap and a not quite matching sticker. Now on to a handful of 3x3s from Diane. First up, it's time to solve a bit of a mystery. This is the Diane Gu Hong V2, which is the first real speed cube that I ever bought. And I always talk about how I bought a black version of this cube, but they sent me a white version. Now the cube itself doesn't actually matter, but if we go ahead and look at this packaging here from Amazon, it does in fact say black on it. But the interesting thing is there's actually two labels on this puzzle. So if we just go ahead and peel off this upper layer, you can actually see underneath that it says the word white. So they knew it was white all along, but they sent it to me anyway. They changed the label on it to make it look like it was a different color. Now the next really good 3x3 that Diane released was the Zanchi. Now this is actually a mini version of it. I have some full size versions of it that I'll get to in a minute. But yeah, this one was actually lubed by a really old company called Lubix. Now before we get to those other Zanchis, which also have an interesting story to them, this is the Diane Tengyun M 3x3. And yes, M does in fact stand for magnetic. This is actually a pretty recent release from Diane. Sure enough, they are still a company that still exists and they occasionally release new cubes and yeah this is one of their newest 3 by 3s and it actually has a really interesting turning style it's just super smooth and super duper quiet but yeah it actually is a pretty nice cube but i don't think anyone really uses it now this was my first diane sanchi and my second ever real speed cube now you may be wondering why is it not in a box and that's because it didn't actually come in a box, but it did, however, come with a box. And that's because this was a DIY puzzle. That was a thing back in the day where you'd get a bag full of parts and you'd have to put the cube together yourself. And so they gave you a box with it. So I guess we better put the box together. I'm not exactly sure how these things go together, but I think it's something like this. Yeah, there we go. And the top goes on just like this. It has this little sticker on it. It's number 499,000. Maybe the 499,000 Diane cube to be made, but it is now properly in side of its box for the very first time. Same scenario with the box on my Black Diane Sanchi. Now I actually bought this puzzle because I was going to my first WCA competition and stickerless cubes were not yet legal back then. So I actually had to get a black one to be able to compete. Now here is the box. This one is actually 560,000. So of course that means I got it a while later and here we go. Let's fold everything into place and let's get the cube and stick it in there for the very first time. There we go. Now the remainder of the puzzles down here are basically just from brands that I have two or fewer of, so I can't really put them into big categories. The New Island Windstorm. This is a weird and possibly quite sketchy brand that I think was making knockoffs of certain popular puzzles at the time. They asked me if I wanted to try out some of their new 4x4s, so I said yes, not knowing any better. And it was, in fact, a pretty good puzzle. I just don't think it was actually their design. Same deal with this one. It's just a stickerless version with the same cube. Oops, I just ripped it. But yeah, I think these were actually from Amazon, and I think this might actually be a thing, like knockoff puzzles on Amazon. So one of the reasons not to buy cubes there, also including my black white Guhong mix up that was also from Amazon. This is the MF8 Sun Cube, an interesting little non WCA puzzle that has tons of little tiny moving parts and doesn't turn that well. But basically you can do a 45 degree turn like this and then you can just kind of keep on turning it and it gets into some really crazy states as you would imagine. The MF8, wait, this isn't also a Sun Cube. Oh, the Curvy Copter 3. So this is basically a different version of a Curvy Copter, which is a puzzle I mentioned earlier. So it turns on the edges like this. But the crazy thing about this one is it can also turn like a 3x3, which is just insane. This is the Armadillo Cube, a cool little 3x3 mod. And I think it was actually its creator who reached out to me and asked to make a video on it. So yeah, it's a pretty cool little cube, kind of a combination of a shape mod and a sticker mod. This is just a cheap knockoff of a Rubik's brand that was probably made sometime in the 1980s. As you can see here, its price is $4. So yeah, it's probably a pretty old cube. And yeah, doesn't turn very well. Turns as good as an old Rubik's brand. Here we have the Calvin's Puzzle Hexaminx, same brand as the Megaminx ball from way back in the video. And basically this is a Megaminx turned into a cube 
cubic shape. So as you can see, the centers are like this. You have two centers per side, which makes a total of 12 to match the Mega Minx. Next is the Wit Eden Mix-Up Cube. It's pretty similar to the MF8 Sun Cube that I showed you earlier, except instead of being able to turn one of these outer layers when you do 45 degrees, you actually are able to turn one of these inner layers. So it mixes up like this, and it's actually a pretty fun puzzle to solve. A lot more fun than the Sun Cube. This is the Land Land 2x2. It was my very first 2x2, and for years I actually thought it was a Rubik's brand, but turns out on the packaging it says right there, it is a Land Land. So let's open this up here. There we go. And yeah, it doesn't turn that great. This is the Land Land Scube, also my very first Scube, even though I got it many years later, around the time that I started this channel. And yeah, it turns pretty badly. It's very clicky with those ball bearings. This is the Fang Shi Shuang Run 3x3. They were a speed cubing company that were around for a little while. And of course, it was made in China in Comic Sans, which is the best kind of made in China. So it does have this kind of cool illusion look to it. It was also a Lubix Cube. That's their logo right there. And yeah, it has a pretty cool feel to it too. Here's the cube twist square one, my very first square one. It turns pretty bad and pops a lot. This is a three by three shape mod called the windmill cube from some weird, probably knockoff sort of brand. And here it is. It's a three by three, but it is in a different shape. This is a mini QJ three by three. And as you can see, the box is kind of bursting at it seems a little bit. And that's because this is a custom mod that I made. This is the Lego cube. If we can actually open it up here. This is just a three by three, but with Legos glued on on the outside instead of stickers. This is the Mefferts mini Mala cube. It's a three by three that has kind of these ball shaped pieces and it is actually solved right now. The goal is to have no more than one of the same color on each side. This is the Christmas tree puzzle from a little brand called Z cube. So opening this up here, oops, we broke it. It is just a cube shaped like a Christmas tree. And finally, a puzzle that I alluded to on the very second cube in this video. This is the Maru Nano Cube. As you can see, it doesn't quite fit its packaging very well because it is actually a DIY puzzle. So normally all the pieces would be in here, but this is just a tiny 15 millimeter Rubik's Cube. It's really cool. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Now my one request if you made it this far into the video is that you go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Clearly if you watched at this point, then you really like Rubik's Cubes, and I think you'll like the rest of my content too. In fact, if everybody who had ever watched to the end of one of my cube collection videos had subscribed, I would have an additional 500,000 subscribers. That's a lot of people who have watched these videos. So yeah, go ahead and hit that button. I've already spent over 10 hours just today recording this video. It was a ton of work. Don't be one of the 88% of my viewers who watch my videos without being subscribed. And once you make sure you're subscribed, be sure and leave a comment down below with the word potato in it to let me know and to show me that you made it this far. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video and I'll see you guys next time.